Well, it's basically a book on pandemics. It's commissioned as part of a series uh, out, of New, out of New York by Oxford University Press called What Everyone Needs to Know. So it has books like The Catholic Church, What Everyone Needs to Know, or Modern China, What Everyone Needs to Know. And they asked me to write on pandemics. They're question and answer books that are, that are provide, to provide a, 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 a readily accessible, easy to read summary for a general intelligent audience. And, uh, and, and I think that's what they do. And of course, with pandemics, if you're talking about modern China, you're talking about concepts that are kind of broadly familiar to most people, so you can write fairly directly about it. You're talking about economic and political concepts. But, but in, in infectious disease, of course, I had to write about infection immunity itself because a lot of the details of that, or even a basic understanding, is not familiar. So it had to, I had to do a lot of introduction on that. Um, my conclusion, is, you know, we have to be concerned about pandemic infections. We have to keep our research going. We have to keep our public health services going, which are publicly funded. Really important we don't, uh, we don't degrade those. Uh, but we're pretty well prepared, actually, to deal with a lot of things. It doesn't mean we won't get a major pandemic that's, that's severe, but I think we're in much better shape as every decade goes by to deal with such a pandemic. For instance, if you take the 1918-19 influenza pandemic, when 50 or 100 million people died in a human population that was a third the size of the one today, uh, we didn't isolate the virus until 1933, so it was 14 years after the pandemic before we actually knew what the infection was. We knew it was an infection, we understood infection, but we, didn't understand, we weren't able to actually isolate the, the causative agent. Now we've got antiviral drugs. And also a lot of the people who died in 1918 died from secondary bacterial infection. We can deal with that with antibiotics. We saved a lot of people in this latest influenza pandemic. A number of fit, young, healthy adults got severe infections. Also a number of heavily pregnant women got severe infections. We saved a lot of them by using uh, uh, extra, uh, the ECMO machines, the heart-lung type machines, to actually breathe for them through the crisis. And so we, we do a lot better with these things than we did, but the, the risk is still there. With bioterrorism, I, I, it, it could be that some really crazy person uh, tries to develop some extraordinarily severe influenza virus that kills off most of the people on the planet. But it's hard to see the reasoning behind that and, uh, and why you would do that, because you would kill off your own people as well if you're trying to help some particular group. I think, I think we're much, the, the, the type of research that does that is, is very tightly regulated, done under very high security conditions. I think it's much less likely that will happen now than it has in the past. There's possibly one case back in the 1970s where a lab strain did cause an epidemic and, uh, and, and it is possible that it escaped. And, and probably under a very poorly run laboratory regime. Now that's extremely tightly regulated. But, you know, it is possible that the technology is not that obscure and, 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 and someone who's, who is malevolent could do that deliberately. But, but it's hard to see why. I mean, there are very good bioterror agents. The best bioterror agent is anthrax, as we saw at the time of the, uh, the, the World Trade Center bomb uh, attacks. That, um, and anthrax is easy to get hold of. It's not that difficult to grow. It's easy to disseminate. And so that sort of biological weapon is a great terror weapon. It doesn't kill a lot of people, but it introduces great terror. And I think that's what terrorists are actually about. They're not really that influenced, interested in killing a lot of people. They're interested in causing terror that draws attention to their cause and, and, and gets people to, to leave them alone, for instance, and not, and not stop them from going along their particular malevolent pathway. Well, we, we, we've got a big problem with antibiotic resistance in bacteria. And uh, because we've overused antibiotics, possibly some of it's coming out of the agricultural use of antibiotics. Uh, it's certainly coming out of the, the ready availability of antibiotics, for instance, in Asian countries, and a general overuse. So we have multi-drug resistant strains of bacteria. Uh, we have these multi-drug resistant staphs, for instance, that cause problems in hospitals. Uh, in the past, they used to come out of hospitals quite frequently. Now they're coming out of the, the general population. We've handled those through good nursing and through, uh, through hand washing and all that sort of thing. Though in some cases, we've had very, very sick people who, where we've had to use experimental products or we've had no products, so people have died. 
And we're very worried about multi-drug resistant tuberculosis as well, or total drug resistant tuberculosis. What happened a bit was we dropped the, the ball on antibiotic research. It wasn't very profitable for the drug companies, so a lot of them stopped doing it. Uh, Gates Foundation has put a lot more money back in. There's now a greater consciousness that you need more antibiotics. But we've also been running through the available pathways in the bacteria that are different from the biochemical pathways in us that we can actually target. So we need a lot of innovative thinking and research in antibiotics. Antivirals, uh, they're very specific to a particular virus and you need to use several of them. The basic principle in therapy is if you're dealing with something that's replicating fast, like a cancer cell or a virus or whatever, you need to use multi-drug drug therapy that targets different pathways. We've been using antibiotics that target one pathway, so you'll get resistant mutants selected. If you use an antiviral that targets one pathway, you'll get a mutant resistant form selected. Uh, so you need to use three different ones that target different viral pathways. The pr main problem with developing antivirals is market. And, and how do the drug companies actually do that? How do they get a profit from it? And, uh, and how do they, they fund it? Because to bring a drug to market now costs about a billion dollars to get it through all the regulatory stuff and so forth. To get through all the regulatory frameworks and everything, you have to go through this enormous process. And because we tolerate a very, very low level of risk in anything. Now, if you go back 40 years, that consciousness wasn't there. Some of the products that were licensed then that are still in use would never have been licensed today because they would never get through the safety test. <laughs>